Tony D and Little Joan, and this is your screenwriter's rant on Frankie Frico. Um, a strange movie that looks like it was made poorly in the 80s. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Heart in South Jersey. It's the Pioneers books 1 through 15. Available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. This definitely takes place like in the 80s or 90s. And it's about this guy who supposedly has a perfect life, a perfect girlfriend, but he sees an ad for Frankie Frico that will teach him how to party. And so he calls it, and Frankie Frico shows up, and he's a little gremlin guy, along with his friends, from the maker of... Uh, or the director of Psycho Goreman. I vaguely, I think I did a thing on that. I'm almost sure I did. That was a bit crazy too. So the idea is he call, he summons Frankie Frico by calling him up, and him and his other gremlin friends show up to wreck his house, drink his beer, and party. <laughs> and the puppets are terrible, like eighty again, eighties puppets. The whole thing's very 80s. Uh, I think it might be a little older. Late 80s, I'm going to say. So, they party and wreck his house and do all sorts of crazy things. But then, um, they get pulled through a portal into, I don't know, the gremlin world. Because Frankie has escaped to party on Earth. And then he's called back to his home dimension, I guess, to to uh, suffer for his crimes. And then the guy is pulled along with him, and he's another puppet too, so they're all puppets. And then uh, he becomes trapped there and has to figure out a way out. So him and Frankie and the other gremlins have to escape together. There's his girlfriend probably showing up after he returns. Or does somebody take his place, I wonder? I wonder if somebody takes his place. He's got a weird thing on his neck. I don't know. Uh, but it's a very strange movie. Um, it's I like the name. I kind of enjoy the premise. Here he is selling. It's, it's only in theaters October 4th. How many theaters is this going to be in? Come on. Come on. Telling me you got distribution for this movie? Yes, you did. I got to give you credit. Written and directed by Steve Kostansky. Okay. I mean, I would say it. I would expect it to be good. I mean, I'd expect it to be. It's very schlocky. It reminds me of the old trauma movies. It, it seems like very much like a trauma movie. And, um,. Here's the gremlin world, I guess. Here's one of the other robot gremlins. It's very strange. Like if it, if they <laughs> if they had made this movie in the '80s, I would have been like, "Oh yeah, that's that's a movie they make now." Making it now, it's almost nostalgia. It's almost nostalgia for me, just in its tone and the way it comes off. The way the characters are saying, party! Woo, party! <laughs> He's drinking a soda called Fart, I think. I think it says Fart on that can, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I would watch it. I don't know if I could sit through the whole movie, though. Um, October 4th. It's kind of a Halloween-y movie. You know, you go to see... Halloween movies, you want to go see something horror. This is sort of horror adjacent almost. It's not, you know, it's not going to be scary, but just something stupid. You go see with your friends and then go, I don't know, eat a bunch of candy. Oh, here's a write-up. Uh, after calling a late-night party hotline that promises out-of-this-world fun, uptight yuppie, okay, that's very 80s, Connor Sweeney must battle the pint-sized forces of evil unleashed through his phone line, led by the maniacal, maniacal rock and roll goblin, Frankie Frico. Oh, so he's goblin? All right, so first act, 
I guess Connor's uptight. He's a, that's a, that was a very common theme in '80s movies. You gotta loosen up, man. You gotta learn to party. <laughs> so he's too uptight. He's got the perfect light, but it's too uptight. You gotta loosen up, Connor. His friends tell him, "Oh, yeah, you're too strict." Uh, really? No, I don't think so. And then, so he calls the party hotline, and then. And the effects are very 80s, too. The wacky gremlins or goblins or whatever they are show up to help him party, and they wreck his house. And that's them loosening him up. So, party. Uh, then they get pulled into their home dimension, wherever that is, and there are more powerful goblins and gremlins running the show. And they're mad at Frankie Frico for whatever he did there. I don't know. And um, so now they're trapped there and he's trying to figure a way back to Earth. And um, the, the uh, end result will be they eventually get back to Earth and Connor is now a cool guy because of his experience. Maybe he stays friends with Frankie. Um or not, I don't know, and uh, continues to have, but he has better life, because he can party now, I couldn't party before, but now I can party, now I don't need my stupid job, and my stupid house, no, it probably keeps the house and the job, but, yeah, this, these were the, this is 100% an 80s movie, I mean, these were the messages in the 80s, party, you too, you gotta loosen up, dude, <laughs> and, um, it kind of had the opposite effect after a while. People were like, hey, you know, you really you really shouldn't drink so much and just constantly party. You have to actually go to work and go to school and stuff, you know? Actually had the opposite effect on me, I think. Um, you know, yeah. It was like too much. After a while, it just, you know, it becomes the same. It became the same thing over and over again. Like, yeah, people are... People are too uptight, they got a party. No, they're not. They're constantly partying and they're constantly drunk when they're not supposed to be and they're smoking pot and smoking cigarettes and having sex with each other and being completely irresponsible. You can't cut, do it constantly. I mean, once in a while you got to cut loose, but Jesus. It became, yeah, we had an epidemic of partying down. There's a balance in life. Hey, you want to party once in a while. You don't have to wreck your whole house to do it. I would say, Frankie Frico. Uh, <laughs> the name really sells it. I mean, that's that's the reason you watch this movie. Hey, you want to rent Frankie Frico and watch that? What the hell is Frankie Frico? I don't know. It looks like a stupid movie with puppets in it. And then you sit and you watch. You kind of half watch it. You know, laugh at it. It's a movie you laugh at, not with, really. Because it's just so insane and stupid. But I think that's the intent of the filmmaker. To make something so crazy and wild, you just kind of laugh at it. I think that was sort of the intent with a lot of trauma movies. Um, but they got the energy for it, I'll say. They got more of the energy from that era than uh, the remake of, say, uh, The Toxic Avenger. That just looks boring. That looks like it's trying too hard, you know? Whereas this looks like, yeah, they actually are trying some stuff here. It's got to be stupid, but it'll be fun stupid. So, I don't know. I'd watch it, I guess. I don't know who I'd watch it with. Like, back in the day, if you, if you were a teenager, you'd watch a movie like this. You'd sit around with your friends and, you know, eat food. And if you had beer, you'd drink beer or whatever. But I didn't really have beer. I, I would just sit around with my friends. We'd eat food and watch a stupid movie like this. And then we'd play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, that was the 80s. It was cool. Oh, you missed it. Anyhow, that's it for me, Tony D., and little Joan. Uh, check us out on the other sites. I put all my videos on the other sites. There's two other videos. So you should definitely subscribe to me on the green site, the orange site, and the black site. Can't say their names anymore because YouTube is slowly crushing us with censorship. Anyhow, uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you.